Hi guys, so I'm frankly getting a little tired of the BBC and especially BBC Question Time when it comes to who they invite on and what information they provide to the public about those guests. Now when it comes to a politician we can all understand pretty well where they stand on a particular issue if the politician is from the Conservatives, Labour, Lib Dems, Greens, SNP or whatever. However, when it comes to so-called experts it's extremely important for the likes of the BBC to give at least the basics, who the organisation they represent is, what their goals are and who funds them. This is not the first time that the BBC invited on a representative of the right-wing IEA and it took another guest, SNP MP Alan Smith, to educate the Question Time audience. Well done, Alan. Well, if we're talking about transparent sources of finance, I, I do hope we can start with Emily's organisation and uh, the, the transparency of who we're all representing tonight. I am uh, you, deeply on, that's, worried. That's, do you want to explain what you mean by that? The organisation that Emily's representing the has been, the Institute of Economic Affairs has been rated by various uh, other think tanks as being non-transparent in the financing of its organisation. Now we're all how entitled to have boring. our opinions here. We're all <laughs> Her response is, how boring. How boring. Okay, well, here is a league table of different think tanks. You can see here towards the top we have the European Council on Foreign Relations, we have Amnesty International, and then if we go down the table, towards, you know, further to the right, we see Emily's um, Institute of Economic Affairs. Highly opaque. But we'll get to that in a moment. Probably I'm entitled to Alan. have our opinions. I'm my own person. I can speak for myself. Thank you very much. Well, my, my concern is I'm concerned about who you're actually speaking for. I'm here because I was elected. Um, She's here because okay, she's elected. Let, let's, she's here let because Emily she's have a chance to respond to that before you answer this substantive question. Well, firstly, the Institute of Economic Affairs keeps the privacy of our donors. We welcome when donors would like to say that they fund us or donate or... <laughs> so, so when a donor says, yeah, I support this right-wing think tank, then that's okay. But nobody's allowed to ask who funds you. So if, if people ask who funds you, well, that's private information. We're not going to tell you who funds us unless those who fund us want you to know. <laughs> so... I'm concerned about the ones who don't want us to know. That's my problem. And the fact that you're invited onto the BBC to give your opinions on stuff, influencing the public, and you're being funded by people who don't want us to know who they are. Isn't that interesting? But let's continue. Give to our charity, but otherwise I think I'm sat here on a panel as myself, representing my organisation. Rep you're not there to represent yourself. You're there to represent your organization, which is a think tank, which is trying to influence public opinion, influence politics. Alan Smith is there not to represent Alan Smith. Alan Smith is there to represent the SNP. He has been elected like the other people on the panel. Whether they're from the Labour Party, they're there to represent the Labour Party. They're not there to represent themselves. They're there to represent their organization. I don't care what Adam, uh, Alan Smith, his opinion on particular issues. I care about what he wants to do, how, what his party wants to do on that particular issue. Alan Smith, I could disagree with Alan Smith on a hundred things, but if we agree on a particular issue, then that's what's important. Representing the fact that I'm a columnist at Conservative Home and also representing the fact that I've done my research on many issues. And I think I certainly am very happy and deserving of being here. So you're happy and deserving of being here. Okay. Why and here? Do you <laughs> she, she obviously look, look, let's get to what I'm talking about. This is the Institute of Economic Affairs, and I've talked about them before. Uh, the IEA subscribes to a right wing and neoliberal worldview and advocates positions based on this ideology, including climate change denial, okay, and total privatization, in effect, abolition of the National Health Service in favor of a healthcare system the IEA says is similar to Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and Israel. The IEA is funded by the tobacco industry although it does not reveal this, and IEA officers have been recorded offering cash for access and the IEA is headquartered in, in Westminster. 
right in the right place, you know, if you want to be close to the action, be in Westminster. And it says here, funding on the right, undisclosed some funding from fossil fuel industry and tobacco industry. So we know exactly what this organization represents, getting rid of the NHS, denying climate change. And these are some of the comments, uh, get a grip, thanks to my friend, Gre get a grip for posting this. Emily Carver, the one who, Emily, who was just speaking a moment ago, said, uh, are the scales finally falling from the nation's eyes about our NHS? Notice our NHS in quotes here. Obviously, remember, this is an organization that wants total privatization. Get rid of the NHS. Uh, another comment, another article from her. Post-Brexit, the UK must stand strong against authoritarian, sweeping authoritarianism, sweeping the continent. Any liberal-minded person must reject the demonization of the unvaccinated who are free to make choices about their own health. Now, this, I, I don't believe, is about the vaccine. It's more about choice, so-called choice when it comes to health care. Remember, these people want to get rid of the NHS. Um, the war on drugs has failed. Will this government have the guts to, ch to change tack? I'm not exactly sure what she's trying to get at here. And finally, this one, to really fight the woke agenda, we need a march back through the institutions. To um, We need a march back through the institutions. Um, the heavy-handed state interventions often end up backfiring and curtailing liberty. There's no substitute for people power. Obviously, it's not about people power, it's about business power. This is uh, a right-wing organization that is, that is neoliberal. Okay. Um, these are the types of people that the BBC invite on. They don't give any real information about what they represent and who funds them, which I think is deeply concerning. Question time has an influence on public opinion. The guests who are invited on speak their mind about particular issues and they influence the public. I think it's very important that the public know who they're being influenced by. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.